on guys, it's Michael of GF, and today, after seven straight days of recording and editing reviews, I am finally going to be doing my last LEGO Star Wars The Force Awakens set review on Ray's speeder, and the set number for this one is 75099, recommended ages are 7 through 12, and it has a piece count of 193, while the price point is 19.99, and this set is pretty much just like the TIE Fighter that I just reviewed last, uh, actually yesterday, and... Unfortunately, this set is great. The minifigures are great. The new Rey minifigure, as I mentioned in the Millennium Falcon review, is such an awesome figure, capturing likeness to Daisy Ridley. And her speeder is so great. The design of it, the scale, how much LEGO was able to pack into it, the stickers, and how much they add to it. The whole set is awesome. Unfortunately, though, it is 20 bucks, and you don't even get BB-8. And I, I, I know a lot of you guys in Europe pay way more for these sets. Trust me, I, I'm fully aware. But over here in the U.S., this set is overpriced. So I'm going to get into all the reasons just as to why, kind of like the TIE Fighter, this set is awesome. It's just not $20 awesome. But without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so in terms of printing, this version of Rey is not new, but in terms of accessories, she is pretty much totally unique. You can see she's got her staff that we've seen her uh, using on Jakku, which is really nice. It's just a very basic, like, uh, like you know, one of the shorter black rods uh, with, like, a couple of black lightsaber hilts on both ends. And I honestly didn't like that design at first, but then I looked at it and I was like, you know what, close enough. I think it works and uh, it looks fine. Um, but if we go ahead and just remove it real quick, just to, so you can get a better look at the minifigure here, you can see that she actually has a brown Indiana Jones bag. And I know Lego's been using this, like, in tan for, like, city sets for like the past few years but I uh, haven't seen one in brown for a long time and uh, it's cool seeing it pop up in one of the freaking Force Awakens sets really brings back the nostalgia of when I first started my YouTube channel uh, way back in 2008 but yeah you can see that the hair piece that she has is really really nice uh, definitely captures the entire like uh, you know the whole hairstyle that she'll be sporting in the movie and uh, it's really nice to have an entirely you know exclusive uh, hair piece for this minifigure and it looks awesome the face is really nice and if there's one thing like a really captured well for the majority of the Force Awakens minifigures is likenesses to the actors i mean the slightest changes in the eyebrows the slightest you know uh, adjustment to the mouth and the way that you know everything's positioned on a face can really make such a huge difference when you're trying to get likeness to an actor i know because i paint faces all the time and lego really nailed it for daisy ridley here and it looks awesome same be said for the uh, alternative facial expression uh which is much more i guess concerned and focused looking and i think this is definitely the better uh version on the other side personally and that uh, looks really really awesome but if we go ahead and uh, pull the bag off to give you a better look at uh, the torso print and uh, you can see the torso print obviously suffering from the same like a whole like uh, consistency with the belt uh, printing error that most minifigures suffer that have belt printing but I mean it still looks really awesome the design is great and I love all the wrinkles and everything that uh, you know is, is, is a part of the torso design and then how it continues onto the legs and uh, I mean like I said the printing on this minifigure is just phenomenal and there's really nothing to complain about uh, removing the hairpiece that'll give you a look at the uh, back of the torso you can see that the uh, printing on here you know like I said the awesomeness just continues and uh, it's a really great minifigure overall and what's really awesome is she even comes with her mask the mask that she'll be wearing in the movie to like I guess withstand the desert conditions and uh, the harsh conditions of Jakku and you can see that this entirely new mask piece uh, you can only get this in this set and it's really really awesome I actually have already uh, had the chance to uh, start painting this for my showcase video that I'll be doing toward the end of the year and uh, it looks really really awesome and I mean I don't know how many times I just said that but I mean I cannot stress enough how uh, really cool this looks and some people say it's too big personally I don't see it I think this looks really great and the printing on the front is even you know really adds to it all the little like uh, rivets that you can see printed around the lenses and speaking of the lenses the lenses actually do protrude a little bit and are printed black which is really awesome you've got the silver flashlight or at least i'm guessing that's the flashlight on the side of it so i mean the entire figure is awesome and the accessories that you get that are exclusive to this set really make it uh you know that much better than the version we get with the millennium falcon and for our final minifigure of all the force awakens sets prepare for some name butchering because we've got our own car thug or Uncar. It's got to be one of the two pronunciations, right? <laughs> I hope. Anyway, uh, yeah, this minifigure, I, I don't know what I'm looking at, so I don't know what to say other than the design is cool, because I mean, this is obviously going to be some kind of thug, some kind of uh, dude who's going to be chasing Rey in the movie on Jakku. Um, I just, you know, we haven't seen this guy. I don't know what I'm looking at, but it is a really interesting looking minifigure and definitely pretty different, especially with his freaking like gangster gold crowbar. Um, that's a thing, but if we go ahead and remove the dark blue gray 
mode, which is really awesome to get in dark blue gray. Don't get a lot of those in that color, by the way. But you can see uh, the whole mask that this guy's wearing. I'm guessing this guy's not a droid because he's wearing a jacket and most droids don't. Um, so I'm guessing this entire thing is like one big mask that he's wearing and he's got like uh, some goggles too, which is really cool and uh, really interesting looking design. I mean, I, I'm sure Lego nailed it. It looks really cool, but it's just there's not much I can say about it. Uh, the torso is really nice. And then what's really cool about the torso and the light printing and the bell printing, all of it is uh, you've got like this silver texture, which is really nice and definitely stands out on the minifigure. And uh, I mean, you really, it's not a texture. It's more of just like an effect that they have printed on there. And uh, you've even got like a bunch of, uh, I'm not really sure if that would be considered camo or just like a bunch of sand that's all over his clothing, but it's still really cool uh, for the jacket that he's wearing and the, how like all that, you know, all of that, the design work continues down onto the legs. It looks really awesome. Same we said for the back of the torso and the back of the torso almost uh, looking a little bit more detailed than the front if you exclude the uh, silver printing that you get on the front. Um, so I mean, overall, this uh, this thug that I guess will be chasing Ray on Jakku is really, really nice looking. It's just I wish I knew more about him so I could say more about him. But other than that, we're going to go ahead and take a look at Ray Speeder itself. All right, so when I first saw the leaked pictures of the Force Awakens sets, like before Force Friday, when you know when they all came out at once, I th this set Ray Speeder really caught my eye because of just how great the design is. Now we all already know what this speeder looks like. We've seen uh, Ray make her debut on it in the first uh, Force Awakens teaser, heading toward a scrapyard on Jakku. It looked like, and then in the second teaser, heading past that crash star destroyer that's been there for like 30 years, uh, because that that's where like where the whole Battlefront map is going to take place on Jakku. And I mean. Lego just really knocked it out of the park with this design. You know, the designer or designers that were involved with putting this together really did a great job, and I think that this design really couldn't be any better than this. I mean, maybe the parts could be printed, but that's really just reaching because, like I said, this set is absolutely fantastic, and you can see uh, right off the bat that on the side here, you've got a ton of accessories that you didn't already see with, with Ray in the minifigure portion of this video because they are attached to the set, and you can see that you've got a freaking chainsaw. I mean, this girl is ready to go and she's got macro binoculars clipped on here obviously if you don't already know if you're you know just getting into lego the, these can obviously be these are accessories that you can give to the minifigures themselves and you've got this uh, gun here that's clipped onto the side and uh, this gun i just pulled off the clip with it accidentally uh but the gun is just a very basic like uh you know actual like pistol piece with a lightsaber hilt just uh, on the tip there for the barrel and uh, so she's already got like a total of like freaking five accessories so ray is just like ready to go and i think lego you know i think that's really great because it kind of captures like the whole like scavenger type feel uh, that her character gives off in the movie or at least at the start of it so I mean this is really great and uh, something I really thought was awesome when I was looking at the pictures and I had to look really closely to actually see it you can see that this set actually has stud shooters on the sides and I'm not sure if the thing actually has guns or not in the movie um, or maybe this is just a playability feature that Lego actually managed to really seamlessly pack into the set but it's really cool how great you know the dark red stud shooters just fit into the set like it, it, you don't you don't even notice um, and they just like I said they fit in so well if you don't know how such shooters work you know you just push down the gray layer lever words and they fire and so I mean it's awesome they are uh, they're great little playability features and I, I mean I've already talked about them like 4,000 times but um yeah, so I guess we'll go ahead and point out the stickers that this set has to offer. You can see that we've got a sticker right here, uh, which is right behind each stud shooter on the bottom uh, half of the speeder. And you can see we've got a uh, couple of uh, stickers on these two dark red slopes here. And then on this side, you've only got one. And then uh, on these like gray flaps toward the back, you've got uh, some like weathered, uh, like, you know, like some paint chipping off of like the dark red here. It's really awesome looking. And uh, you can see you've even got a uh, little sticker there for the control panel, which is really nice as well. This entire thing is packed with stickers. Unfortunately, but I mean with a design like this I really can't complain that they're not printed you can see right here uh, like right in front of the driver's seat you've got a uh, little another little clip and what you're supposed to do with this is you take a uh, Ray staff and uh, her Indiana Jones bag and you just go ahead and rest the Indiana Jones bag on top of the clip and then you take the uh, staff and you just clip that right on top of it and both stay in place perfectly and like I said you have room for every accessory in this set and if you wanted to I'll go ahead and show you this feature right now the uh, the the uh, engine like the bottom engine if you turn this to the right then this entire panel right here this entire flap opens up and it doesn't open all the way you do have to pull it you know the rest of the way but who cares uses a very basic technique mechanism but like I was saying you could probably take the freaking thug through the, the thugs god freaking words <laughs> not easy keep going just keep going like like I said 
you could probably take the thugs like gold crowbar and actually like pack that in there if you really wanted to I mean I, I feel like you'd probably be able to if you really tried I mean this this set is just uh, really accessible and really great for accessories and you can see that if we go ahead and uh, pull the other flap open both flaps open up and uh, you can see we've got a crate right here and this crate you can go ahead and lift off the uh, top of it and inside you've got a ton of uh, extra you know studs for these stud shooters which is really cool and a nice way of uh, hiding those away and uh, you know making them as a part of the set and easy to access when you are you when you know you need, you need to reload them but one small problem and this is more of a nitpick than anything but uh, you do have to like twist the engine back to the left in order to close it back up which is really not that big of a deal but just something I figured I'd point out you got a lot of vents on the front for ventilation I mean uh, you can see the two by two available space obviously you can go ahead and take Ray and I uh, will go ahead and you know just to be uh, you know correct just uh, put the uh, the mask on and uh, have her piloting or driving her speeder here and I mean you can get the minifigure to grip onto the analog sticks I'm not going to do it for like you know right now I might do it in like a separate angle um, but I mean it's still like I said an absolutely awesome design there is like practically nothing for me to complain about except the fact that this is it you just get the speeder and you just get Ray and the thug and it's like I mean well I want to say that that's a good deal for 20 bucks I can't recommend it just because of how you know like it's a, it's a great design and it's accurate. It's all of the above awesome. And so is the Ray minifigure. So is whatever the hell this guy is going to be in the movie. But I feel like if you had BB-8, if you had him in this set and he's not included, it would have really made this come together and it would have really made that, that $20 price point feel a bit more worth it because I know you like I'm, I'm saying it a lot in this review already, but I know Europeans probably don't find 20 bucks that expensive. But I mean, like for us over here for a set this size it, it, it kind of is and I find it unfortunate that you you know they couldn't have included something with the with the you, you know, with, I forget how to pronounce it like is it Uncar or Uncar I probably couldn't even have pronounced it in the mini figure segment of this video because I, I actually like I pre-record everything and record everything in different segments so I don't know how I pronounced it in the first place and I sure as hell cannot pronounce it now but yeah I mean it's a great design great set great minifigures it's just I really wish it had something else to make that $20 a little bit more worth it um, but I mean if you're willing to pay that then absolutely go for the set because it is really fantastic but we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the box instruction manual, extra pieces and we'll wrap up my final review for the first line of force awakens sets I cannot tell you how nice it is to have a box that I'm not like struggling to fit in frame. Um, but yeah, you can see that this, the box for this $20 set looks kind of underwhelming on the front. I mean, what you do get, again, the set is great. It's just, I really feel like, like BB-8 should have been in the set or something to make that $20 more worth it. But I mean, the graphic is nice having the speeder on Jakku and the thug, I guess, uh, getting knocked off the speeder. And you've also got Ray on the top here, so we're in the actual size reference, along with the thug there again. And then on the back, you have all the features that I just went over, along with some blueprints for the uh, like the vehicle's design, as we've seen for the rest of the Force Awakens sets. You get a little shot right here I've, I guess uh, the the thug like about to like mug her or something you've got like the accessories down here in the bottom right corner as well as per usual and something worth noting is uh, she's standing on the top of like the, like she's standing on the lid and like almost like 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 I don't know, like sliding uh, through the sand on it. And uh, that's something that I think we even saw on, uh, like if you go on lego.com and you go to the product section and you look at the video for this set, you'll see that the thug is also like, I guess like like almost, you know, he's riding the sand dunes on something. And I guess it was actually the lid on the top, from the top of uh, this crate. So I mean, uh, yeah, that's just a little tidbit I figured I'd mention if you wanna, you know, look into that for yourself. It's just a little uh, detail, I guess, you know, of how the scene might play out in the movie. But uh, yeah, there's your box. The instruction manual for Ray Speeder is, uh, you know, pretty small and thankfully not creased beyond belief. Um, but if we go ahead and flip to the very end here, you can see that we do actually have a total of 43 pages for uh, its build. You can see that number in the bottom right-hand corner there. And then we've got the same routine, Force Awakens stuff. You've got the same features you already saw on the back of the box, just uh, carried over onto the instruction manual. And then you've also got the same, like, minifigure uh, checklist of all the renders of them, which is really nice as well. And you've also got uh, the same, like, X-Wing and TIE Fighter uh, advertisements. So, I mean, aside from that, that's really it. And like I said, it's just your basic routine stuff that we've seen throughout all Step and Force Awakens sets. The extra pieces aren't exactly that exciting. You can see I did uh, make a little mini dark saber though out of the uh, like shorter black rod and the uh, black lightsaber hilt that you do get with the set in case you want to make like a baby Pre Vizsla from the Clone Wars. And you can do get an extra uh, light light uh, light gray lightsaber hilt along with an extra pistol piece. So you can actually make uh, two of these pistols and have her like freaking dual wielding. So I mean the extra pieces actually aren't that bad. And uh, you do get a couple of uh, like studs, you know, a plate here, a couple of tiles, a cheese slope, you know, your basic stuff and antenna. Um, so I mean that's really it though for Ray's speeder and now we're gonna go ahead and wrap up the final lego star wars the force awakens review this speeder practical this cross guard lightsaber practical this shitty lightsaber practical 
Okay, I got it. This droid, practical, and I don't even know how it works. Yep, all practical. This other droid, practical, everything is practical. I got it, all practical effects. Your father, practical. Wait, what? And his ship, practical. All right, guys, and there you go. All seven of my reviews for the Star Wars The Force Awakens lineup. And God, I can't believe I just said that because I remember when Star Wars Episode Seven was announced back in 2013 and I could only imagine what these sets were going to look like and to like actually have it, to, to, to have just said that, to have just said that I just finished reviewing all the sets for the film it, it, it is insane how fast time goes by and how this, like I said, this has all already happened. And I mean, for me as a YouTuber though, doing this, doing all these set reviews in one week was one of the most challenging things I've done in the past year because I do not review that many sets in that span of time. Usually I review one set, maybe two a week, and possibly a showcase if I can. You know, and maybe not even that. Usually it's just a video a week I can manage to crank out. But I mean, with The Force Awakens, I knew I could not keep you guys waiting. I wanted you guys to see my reviews on these sets so you guys can get my opinion on them because I know some of you guys actually do value my opinion on these set reviews, which is so awesome to me. And that's why I do these reviews because the support you guys give me, especially when I do things like this, is so amazing and you guys have been so awesome throughout the entire series of these reviews and I cannot thank you enough for that and uh, yeah but if you enjoyed this review on Ray's speeder which is not even in the shot uh, definitely let me know by dropping this video a like below and or your opinion on the set down in the comments as uh, as I pointed out this set design is fantastic all these set designs for all the Force Awakens sets are fantastic Kylo Ren's command shuttle kind of excluded though because I recently found out that apparently the wings aren't going to fold like that in the movie which kind of sucks because that means that that, that like the functionality of the wings and that set would be kind of inaccurate but I mean guys if I were if I had to recommend what sets to pick up if you want unique sets and unique minifigures that really you know that you can be re really feel satisfied with I would absolutely recommend the Ray speeder set the transporter and Poe's X-Wing Starfighter because those three are really really well designed they're not re repetitive in any, in any way like I say that because like you guys might have had a Falcon in your time as a, as, you know, as in collecting LEGO. You might have had a TIE Fighter already. So I'm saying, like, if you want a really unique set with really unique minifigures, I would definitely go with the X-Wing, the Transporter, or Ray Speeder. One of the three, and unfortunately all three, all seven sets, are overpriced. And uh, clearly, I can't really say... I, can, I mean, obviously, I can only speculate as to what must have happened in between LEGO and Disney. I mean, obviously, Star Wars, especially The Force Awakens, is a huge deal, a huge license for all toy companies so I'm guessing that with Lego they had to up the prices significantly as part of some kind of deal who knows but it really affected us as the consumers because these sets are all overpriced and I know you guys in Europe pay exorbitant and totally absurd amounts but over here in the US these sets are ridiculously overpriced and it kind of sucks and I, I mean I say that and I think about how much you guys over in Europe have to pay and then I feel a little bit spoiled because I know you guys it, it is it is three times worse for you guys which which is terrible because now we're paying for like overpriced sets and then like you guys are already paying for the overpriced sets and then it's like you know the fact that they're even more overpriced now it's like it's just a mess in terms of the prices but if you're willing to pay them if you're willing to pay those markups you get some really really solid sets with some amazing minifigures and some really great designs and uh, I could not recommend the Star Wars The Force Awakens lineup more if you want to pay for the uh, marked up prices but uh, aside from that though guys you can follow me on Twitter Facebook and Instagram by the way links to all three of those are down in the description below and uh, this by itself was pretty much one big project and now I'm going to be moving on to Aero Season 4 Customs. As a matter of fact, I just upgraded my Ultron minifigure, which I'll be doing a separate showcase for very soon. And I'm actually, as soon as I'm done with this, with this review and I get it up, I'm also going to be getting started on my huge Star Wars The Force Awakens showcase video that I'll be posting right before the movie comes out on December 17th. And I will have 12 total minifigures for that showcase video. It is going to be my biggest showcase video ever in terms of minifigures, even beating out my Age of Ultron showcase, which had 10 minifigures. So... It's going to be pretty insane, guys. It's going to be one hell of a year, you know, for the rest of the year, for what's left of 2015. And um, I absolutely cannot wait for Star Wars The Force Awakens. I have waited 
ever since I became a Star Wars fan when Revenge of the Sith came out back in 2005 for this to actually be happening and the fact that they, you know this is going to be continuing on as an ongoing sequel trilogy with some amazing directors Ryan Johnson after J.J. Abrams after him Colin Trevorrow and, and, and freaking Gareth Edwards doing Rogue One and I mean you've got the guys who freaking did the Lego movie doing a Han Solo spinoff Guys, it's a really good time to be a Star Wars fan, and uh, I could not be more excited that uh, all of this is happening and that I was able to review these sets for you guys. So I think I'm going to end it there, and I'll see you guys later. All right. Bye. Okay, we're clearly just, focusing is just completely out of the question, isn't it? In terms of printing is not new, but in terms of it's the uh, shit. This picky reviewer, practical. Wow, really, man? Not struggling to fit on frame? Fit on frame, for the love of God, Ross. But, it's an instruction manual, I'm not even gonna show it to you because uh, you don't care. That she debuted on, you know, with the, with shit of element to the minifigure go figure to the minifigure go figure how do i even do this crap what seven reviews seven days i just can't words anymore really really excellently excellently is that a word probably not like little detail like one of the, uh, uh, along with shit